NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida has upgraded one of its two massive crawler transporters as the agency continues to prepare for its return to the Moon and journey beyond to Mars. Crawler Transporter 2 is more than 50 years old, but with the current modifications performed by the Exploration Ground Systems Program, CT-2 is expected to be in service for many years to come. The crawler is the size of a baseball infield. The crawler's top speed is 1 mile per hour loaded and 2 miles per hour unloaded. To date, CT-2 has traveled 2,335 miles. Phase I modifications to the crawler include replacement of the existing roller assemblies and bearings with redesigned, upgraded assemblies and bearings that have a greater load capacity. An expanded and upgraded lubrication system was added to service the new assemblies. The jacking, equalization and leveling system cylinders and piping were replaced with redesigned and upgraded versions during Phase II modifications. 20-year service life extension modifications include a total upgrade and modernization of the vehicle's control room, an expanded strain and temperature system, a new condition monitoring system, two new Cummins 1500 kW AC generators, redesigned and upgraded parking and service brakes, control system modifications, Alco diesel engine refurbishments, a complete reconditioning of all gear cases and gears, and a new paint job. These redesigns will give the crawler a longer operational life and enable the giant vehicle to carry the heavier loads anticipated with the Space Launch System rocket. Engineers have conducted a series of incremental tests with CT-2 to prepare for the first integrated flight test of NASA's SLS and Orion spacecraft, known as Artemis I. NASA has tested different rollout variations and combinations as each modification was completed. All modifications and upgrades were operated and tested with an unloaded crawler, a shuttle-era mobile launcher platform standing in for the new ML and then, finally, with a rollout of the newly completed ML-1 to launch pad 39B and back to the vehicle assembly building. CT-2 will carry the ML with the SLS atop from the bob to the pad. The crawler has four reinforced pickup points known as crawler interface blocks one on each corner that secure the ML interface blocks into place. The ML interface blocks are the interface points that allow the crawler to lift and transport the ML to the pad. The crawler does not interface directly with the SLS rocket only the ML or future platform. Once CT-2 makes its 8-hour trek to the pad, the ML and SLS will be lowered onto pad mount mechanisms. After power has been transferred from the crawler to the pad, CT-2 will roll back down the pad slope and park just outside the pad perimeter gate. CT-2 will wait there until a few days prior to launch in case a rollback is required. It will then roll to the mobile service structure park site, which is located outside of the launch environment to protect the crawler from any launch-induced damage. NASA's massive crawler Transporter 2 relies on two 16-cylinder Alco diesel engines to run two 1,000 kW DC generators that in turn power 16 motors to move four sets of tracks that weigh a total of 4 million pounds. Two 1,500 kW Cummins diesel generators provide AC power to power everything else including pumps and lights. Speed is typically kept below 1 mile per hour. A 1-mile trip requires 126 gallons of diesel. Two 2,500-gallon fuel tanks ensure the crawler makes the 16-hour, 8.4-mile round trip to launch pad 39B. A water truck, shown above, wets the gravel paths to keep dust down generated from the rock-crushing ride. Vigilance is key when the crawler is underway. Roughly 30 people keep a close watch during the 4.2-mile trip to launch pad 39B. Some work inside the crawler tending to various systems while others walk with the vehicle and watch closely for performance cues like track function, a critical job considering a max payload of 18 million pounds. Drivers do not rely on GPS for steering but rather a group of spotters. Steering by wire comes courtesy of a steering wheel that's only 6 inches in diameter. NASA takes a slip-seat approach to piloting the colossal rig but in this case the intense concentration needed at the wheel has drivers switching out roughly every hour. Drivers stand as they steer with another driver sitting behind them acting as another pair of eyes. The challenge with steering comes from anticipating the right moment to turn the wheel for the road ahead. Unlike driving a car or truck, the crawler takes its sweet time to reposition itself after turning the wheel. 
For a driver, that means the steering process starts about 50 yards ahead of a turn. Thank you for watching the video. See you in another video.